Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to North Country Off Grid. I recently put out a, uh, a survey for you guys in the community section and I was asking people about bugging out uh, and a lot of you had replied that you're not planning on bugging out. Many of you um, had admitted, which is great, that you you do in fact have a lot of bug out gear, um, bags gear, you know, all the cool stuff. Uh, but you've never actually tried it and then a, a smaller percentage of you guys have actually or at least said you did um, have actually uh, bought in the gear and then gotten out and actually tried to use it to see how they would fare um, if they needed to bug out right so your bob bag b-o-b is your bug out bag and we're not going to go into depth on bug out bags i'm actually going to uh, give a small uh, a shout out to um, a channel and a friend of mine whose channel right now he's building um, and he is he is hitting on all of these topics and I thought man people need to be over there watching him build these different bags talk about the different bags uh, uh, you know there's there's different needs in your bags for different times and situations uh, so you guys can go check out Cascadia uh, preparedness he is the author, Austin Chambers, of the Cascadia Fallen books, which I've shown you guys on here a few times, but I'll put a link in the description below. You guys can go check uh, check out his line of videos, and, and he's just getting started with YouTube, guys, but he has been in uh, the world of survival for quite some time, and if you guys have read his books, which I will also put a link in the description to, I suggest you go get them. If you've read his books, you understand that he has traveled down the path of preparedness uh, in every direction. Uh, and you can just tell that by the way that he writes. And you can tell that in, in the way he pushes scenarios in that book, you can tell that he's been down every rabbit hole. Uh, and you'll see that when you start looking at his, his videos as well, he's got the gear and he's got the systems in place. So go check it out, Cascadia Preparedness, uh, link in the description below. So we are out today, uh, actually looking for some morels, and it started raining, so we're just we're just underneath a tree, getting out of the rain for a minute. It started sprinkling for a little bit, but uh, looking for morel mushrooms out here in the woods. Uh, tis the season, so we're out looking. We're a hair early. Um, it's not the it's not the ideal temperatures just yet, but people are reporting seeing them popping up. So we hope to get out and try to find some, uh, and we're going to show you guys that as well um, as these videos progress and as the season continues, and we can actually show you some on the ground. So if you are new to morels, uh, we will show you what to look for when you are out in the woods. Pretty sure morels grow all over the U.S. So. It'll be, uh, it'll be helpful to many of you guys. They are easily identifiable, and there's not too many. There's basically one that looks like it, and we can show you that as well, um, but they are pretty discernible between the two. So the whole point of this video, um, other than being out in the woods and, and showing you guys morels, hopefully, is uh, in that video, or in that, in that um, survey that I had asked you guys, many of you had made the comments, and this is why it's great for you guys to go check out Cascadia Preparedness because of the books, Cascadia Fallen. Um, I think it'll open up your mind to different reasons why you may need to bug out. Many of you made the comment, I'm not bugging out. I'm gonna stand and fight for what is mine. I think you're not understanding the concept of bugging out, or at least you're not understanding all concepts of bugging out. You don't necessarily bug out just to run away from whatever's coming, okay? I actually think bugging out is a bad idea. I don't really talk to people about bugging out. I think that many people have this uh, romantic notion that they will just go into the woods and survive, and I think you're just going to see lots of dead bodies in the woods. Um, over time, you're not going to go out into the into the woods and survive. And even if you were able to go out in like, you know, peak conditions, and you took a good amount of gear, and you were able to shoot animals, and you were able to fish, how long are you really going to keep that up for? Okay. Up here, probably the first winter. You might be able to do it for a couple months in the summer. Are you really going to a bug out and then survive a, a harsh? North Idaho winter so you really got to think about these things before you know the inner Rambo takes over um, and says oh I can do it 
Um, and, and you can see in there too, a lot of people say, oh, I'm not ever bugging out, I'm just staying here. I think that not bugging out is a good idea in the instance that people are talking about. I'm gonna stand and fight for what is mine. Um, bugging out could get you killed. Bugging in where you have all of your gear, where you have everything in place, if you've been preparing, uh, is probably the better way to go. But for those of you who said, I'm not bugging out because I'm not running. I'm staying and fighting for what is mine. In the Cascadia uh, Fallen books, it is a natural disaster that takes place up here in the in the Pacific Northwest, where you have uh, you have issues with fault lines. You have issues with volcanoes. So it's a very realistic scenario, but it causes people to have to bug out um, because their homes are damaged, because um, infrastructure is damaged. Right, so that is the reason for it. So for you guys who said, oh, I'm never bugging out, you have to have in your mind a scenario where you may in fact need to bug out. Uh, and then you need to have those systems in place. So that's why I want to send you guys over to Cascadia Preparedness, watch what he is setting up, because he talks about the many facets of bug out, whether it's 24 hour bug out, whether it's a 72 hour bug out, or whether you're taking your inch bag uh, and if you don't know what INCH is, it stands for I'm Never Coming Home, um, INCH bag. Uh, and that is that these are different bags that you have set up and probably for your family members as well, right? If you are doing it right. Um, you have all these systems in place for everyone in your family. So I'm never coming home would obviously mean that your building or your house is just destroyed and you need to grab that bag and get out. And in that bag, you're going to have a lot of systems in place to be able to camp out, uh, probably to be able to do some hunting and fishing, scavenging, you know, all of these things. But what it's not is, is it's not saying, oh, we're in. A disaster and now I got to run to the garage and figure out where I kept all my stuff and I got to get to the shed because I think that one thing's under there it's having everything in place in that in that instance so wildfire is another thing guys I where I would not bug out of my place if wildfire comes through here I have to bug out of my place and the last thing I want to be doing is running around grabbing all of my gear or trying to remember where I put everything and trying to think of what I'm gonna need you have these systems in place uh, to be ready for it and wildfires very likely around here wildfire uh, for many of you hurricanes uh, for some of you drought um, for some of you absolute chaos where you live you might live in you know a lot of people in new york tried to bug out and get out of that wave of the virus right so so bugging out is not a an admission of cowardice guys which some of you some of you are under that impression that oh you're you're a coward if you bug out it's not true it's just another facet of survival it's it's another facet of being prepared okay so so for you guys that you know you voted that way hopefully you you see this and then realize like oh I didn't really think about that if we had a if we had a hurricane blow through or if we and I think a lot of you hurricane uh, people I think a lot of you understand this concept and I think many of you are set up this way let me know in the comments though, but I think I think my hurricane or people, tornado people, I think you guys are, are already prepared for that sort of lifestyle. But if you live on a fault line or you live near a volcano, uh, really think about will this ever affect me? And if it does, I got to get out of here. So we're out today, I'm carrying uh, just my 24 hour pack. This is just a pack that would get me through 24 hours or an overnighter in the woods. Uh, it's got some some extra ammo in it it's got um, I actually just threw this uh, this little uh, fold-up shovel that tack niner sent me and it clips right on the back this thing is actually uh, pretty cool I'll show you guys this in another video but I threw that on there just to add more weight one thing I like to do is add weight to my bags when I'm out hiking and, and you know training uh, you know and that is to that is to work your body out. So I put heavy, heavy bags on. Um, I'll throw a bunch of extra water in there that I wouldn't normally take. Something like this. Whereas for this bag, I would not take a shovel for a 24-hour bag. But I add weight to it, and the part of that reason is the training aspect of it, right? Getting your body conditioned to carry 70, 80 pounds. Because if your bag is 50 pounds, but you've been training for 70 and 80, you're now cutting 20, 30 pounds off of your bag. So. Um, you know, just getting your body right and getting your, getting your mind ready for it as well.
So I know a lot of you guys are in cities. I know a lot of you guys are in apartments. A lot of you guys are in uh, main towns. And we've talked about food shortages. In a scenario in which food shortages, food shortages are taking place, what would happen, ideally, um, what would happen is after people have ran out of their supplies and that initial wave of chaos hits where they're willing to go and break in uh, to take, like we've seen in the past, they're going to go in and take from the companies, the big companies, you know, your, your Costco's, your Walmart's. These are the places that are going to get looted and they're going to go in and they're going to take the food. And then from there, it's going to just continue to sprawl out, right, in a chaotic scenario. But if you're someone who is stuck in that, in that center area, that, that, that danger zone, uh, the epicenter, bugging out might be might be a choice that you decide to make. If you see things getting chaotic, you might then take yourself out of that situation and go to an uncle's house in the country. But these are systems that you have to have in place and think about beforehand. Did, did you take stuff out to your uncle? Did you prearrange this with your uncle? Does he know that you're coming in an event where everyone's on high alert? You might not want to just show up to someone's property unannounced, uh, even if it is a friend or family member. You want to prearrange these things and talk about it. And guys, all of this is a prepper lifestyle. It's preparing for scenarios and then putting those procedures in place, right? So understanding what could take place and then how you're going to react is the point. So that's it, guys. If you're, if you're new to the idea of bugging out, if you've never even thought of the concept of bugging out or heard of bug out bag, or you want to kind of know what is in a bug out bag, what I should take, go find out from someone who is experienced and who has actually done it and what happens is is you go out with a bunch of gear and while you're out there you figure out what you use and what you thought you would use you get rid of what you didn't didn't use you go pick up what you wanted while you're out there and this comes from doing it over and over and over in training there are many times I've been up a mountain and thought oh I need this or I need that you know write it down and then when you get back you can add it to your bag uh, and that is the point. So go and learn from someone who has taken the time to put these practices to use uh, over at Cascadia Preparedness. Uh, you guys will see when I'm over there. He, uh, he military experience. Uh, he does some training for people as well. He's got a lot. He's got a resume. Okay. Uh, one thing he does do is he puts this stuff together and then he puts it to use, which is the biggest thing. Don't be fooled by someone who's making videos of putting bags together and calling it a day. If you are not out using this stuff. Uh, get rid of it. This shovel, I might not use this shovel. And if I find that I just don't need this or I can do away with it, I'm going to get rid of it. Uh, and that's the point. Right? So there's no sense in going into the field with a bunch of stuff you don't need uh, or going into the field with a bunch of, or not going into the field with a bunch of stuff you wish you had. Uh, so get out, practice. We're kind of getting down to what seems like that time where practice is, uh, it's almost game time, right? Uh, but you have time for this stuff, guys. So uh, head head over to Cascadia Preparedness. Check it out. Tell Austin, North Country Off Grid sent you. Hit the subscribe button, guys. He's a new channel. Um, don't be fooled. He's new to the channel. He's not new to the lifestyle. Uh, so go over there and soak up the knowledge. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We will catch you on the next one. I sat and rambled that whole time while it stopped raining, and now it is raining again. But uh, that's all right. We're off. We're off to go find some morels.